episode is presented by MSP GeekCon 2023, a conference for MSPs by MSPs. Occurring May 21st through the 23rd, 2023 in Orlando, Florida, this two-day event is built around the journey of technical growth from Tier 1 to Tier 3. Visit MSPGeekCon.com for more information. Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Matt Fox, and I'm with Phil Buck today, filling in for the great Ray Orsini and Tony Francisco. And they are both currently at CompTIA's Community and Councils Forum in Chicago, Illinois, I believe. Phil, is that where That's it is? That's right. So we're going to fill in a little bit today, and we've got some great footage that they've been sending our way. We've got two people on the uh, the docket for interviews today, and we've got more coming your way directly to our YouTube channel as the week goes on. That's right. Check out these interviews from Bob Coppage and Chris Johnson, and stay tuned to the channel because there'll be more coming this week. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to MSP Dispatch Quick Takes. We're here at the CompTIA Community Councils Forum in Chicago. And here joining me is Chris Johnson. The Give me the title again, sir. I run cybersecurity compliance programs. Cybersecurity compliance programs for CompTIA and also podcast host of MSP 1337. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. So talk to us first about your background. What got you into CompTIA first? So like many people that are here participating at CCF, uh, you know, they came up through volunteerism, learning about CompTIA. So once upon a time, I had an MSP. Um, we were primarily in California and then we had some uh, Midwest clients. So we kind of grew organically that way, like many MSPs over an eight or nine year period sold the company. During that time, I was actively engaged in CompTIA. Uh, when I left the, uh, the MSP space, I took on a role as a CISO slash tech director for a school district and kind of left almost the channel completely. Uh, but I stayed engaged with uh, some my former peer group. I was involved with MSP Ignite. And kind of through that, when COVID hit, um, I started getting re-engaged with the channel. And obviously, one of the biggest challenges that a lot of MSPs face is, how do I improve my cybersecurity posture? How do I show that to my clients? How do I show that to my employees? And so we kind of started on this journey of like taking my experiences primarily in healthcare and banking mm. and kind of applying that or sharing back to that group. And very similar to CompTIA, you know, a lot of people get involved because it's a way to give back mm. to their peers and colleagues. And so that's kind of what ended me in the <laughs> leaving the school district to come to CompTIA when uh, they reached out to me. I was like, wow, uh, having volunteered for the past 10 years plus this seemed like a great opportunity to, to continue that journey with a little bit larger yeah. uh, f footprint. Sli slightly bigger audience. That's right, <laughs> slightly bigger audience. So how were you able to take what you learned in your experience with the school district and bring that into CompTIA? Because I'm sure some of the lessons were universal, right? And you oh, were able to apply them here? I, I would say almost scarily universal. So uh, K-12-6 in collaboration with CISA just launched their cyber essentials initiatives, which is a, you know, okay is better than not at all, <laughs> yeah. which is really hard to embrace. But when you look at a lot of the smaller MSPs that we see participate in CompTIA and other programs, there's always the, the excuses that come out. I'm too small. No one cares. Paralysis analysis. You, you could fill in the blank. to get started. I'm, a, yeah. I'm too small a target. It doesn't apply to me. Yeah, yeah. And and the crazy part is that's not unique to solution providers. Right. That is a universal theme across all industries. And what I witnessed in the K-12 space and applying it here is the one key difference is MSPs don't have bureaucracy that sits above them. Mm -hmm. They are the owner and the decision maker. So when I have a conversation with a solution provider and say, hey, look, the, the CompTIA Trustmark or hey, CIS framework or some sort of like control set that will help you improve. Mm -hmm. And I can walk them through like this doesn't have to be overly complicated. Well, then their eyes open up to, I can feasibly do this. You still get the excuses, but the excuses have to be owned by the person that's yeah. giving it, not I can point somewhere else. And that, that's kind of the insane thing. Like we get that all the time, right? The whole here from MSPs, the clients are too small, I'm not a target, whatever. It's weird to hear that 
and you always think it's in the microcosm of the MSP space, but to hear it that K through 12 experienced that as well, yeah. which is much larger scope than the average SMB client, right? The average SMB client, 10 to 50 users typically. Sure. Um, and then going out and saying, okay, well, now you're seeing this in, in your role in CompTIA and talk, working with our solution providers, you're still seeing this. Yeah. I, it's it's mind boggling to me that it still happens. I get it, I was there. That's yeah, the yeah. We've all been there, right? Sure. Um, but it goes back to that do something is better than nothing. Um, Understanding that doing something is better than nothing and then actually making it a point to not just do it, but grade yourself on what it is that you're doing so that there's improvement that yeah. comes with it. I think if you could get more solution providers to see that, that they are improving, that they are making the changes, a lot of the excuses start to go away. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here as the cybersecurity professional uh, with tenured history here. Top three takeaways, if an MSP says, I wanna start, stop doing nothing, start doing something, but I'm not gonna give you the free passive MFA. <laughs> I'm not sure. gonna give you the free passive password manager. Oh man. What are the first three things you say, get these three things done first. And honestly, if you wanna do more cybersecurity trust mark, we've been talking about it. Wayne came on and talked about it. So there's plenty of opportunity to learn about it, but top three things they should do first. So it's funny you said don't, don't throw out you know, MFA and, and I, I totally get it. Like I think you can, you can use technology for only so many things to solve for. So I, I'd say top three things and obviously uh, what's in the trust mark has a category that's not in a lot of frameworks or not all frameworks right. and that's governance and leadership. So I think that number one, you have to have a business culture that you as an organization collectively are saying, we are doing this together. Because what is what is uh, the Drucker saying? Uh, strategy or culture each strategy for breakfast. So yeah. if you have the right strategy, that is not gonna help you very much if you don't have the culture to go right, with you it. You need the adoption. Gotta yeah. have the adoption. Uh, the second one would be, if you don't have documented processes and procedures, then it's all for naught. And you know I think that part of that is tied to when we introduce technologies into organizations, if you don't document how it's implemented and the way in which it's solving for a safeguard or a control within a framework, then how do you solve for it when that person who implemented it is gone? And we've seen the, uh, the IT glue commercials with the hit by bus. It's like, oh man, that's real. Uh, yeah. I think that's so true. And then the yeah. third one is being able to have the conversation as an opportunity with your clients, not as a fear of rejection. Like, oh, they're gonna just try to sell me something. No, I am only as secure as the weakest link. And if you look at the client space for an MSP, they are all part of my ecosystem, no matter how I wanna skin that cat. So that third one is almost as critical as the other two. In fact, I would argue that they're not necessarily in a sequential order. It's like, yeah. these are the top three. <laughs> so that's, that's that would be my top three. All right, perfect. Uh, so if they want to learn more about the cybersecurity programs at CompTIA, they want to learn more about the uh, cybersecurity trust mark sure. that's going to be coming out, um, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, so cjohnson at comptia.org, or you can find me on LinkedIn pretty easily. I would say stay tuned to the news PR releases from CompTIA surrounding the trust mark that will come out tomorrow and later this week. And then, um, yeah, the whole program really is going to kick off at the end of the month. Looking forward to it. And again, I invite you guys, it's not just because he's here. MSP 1337 is on my weekly rotation on my podcast list. Uh, go check it out. Chris, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks you. for having me. Hello from the MSP Dispatch. Hi. <laughs> and it's just oh. not stopping. <laughs> Sorry. I am here live-ish with Bob Coppage. We're here at Contia CCF. <laughs> it, it is a borderline thrill and almost an honor to be here with you, Tom. Tom, thank you, Cindy. T Cindy, you are amazing. <laughs> Bob Coppage, how the heck are you? <laughs> very rare, I can catch him. Very rare. How the heck are you? I'm here in the person. We see each other literally out of state every single time in different locations and we just did a podcast together right your thank podcast. you i appreciate it's amazing that. um and we're here at ccf why are you here tell me about it because you are here and because of that i was drawn almost like sirens 
said, drew the <laughs> sailors to their fiery death on rocks or whatever. Like a dog to poop. You just yeah. got it. Like, oh, it's I got to just just do it. In it. You got to do it. <laughs> but enough about my hobbies. Um, <laughs> so, Bob, <laughs> Bob has a very unfortunate uh, disadvantage when it comes to sarcasm and humor. It's clearly the weakest part of his skill sets. However, some of the strongest attributes you have are frameworks of business. You are in a very seasoned, battle-proven individual from the MSP community, the very community. I'm old. <laughs> um, back to the humor disadvantage. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, you are a seasoned veteran in the MSP community. You are a true evangelist of education through exposure with your videos, your educational videos, uh, the podcasts that you've been doing, uh, the framework and the overall consulting that you do to help others improve the community. Why are you here? What is your involvement here at the CompTIA event? So, like you, but better. <laughs> um. <laughs> The bar is really low. Really I, 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 mean, I mean, can you really get worse? No, but the, the, the thing is, CompT as an organization provides one of the best conduits for communication throughout our industry that is not vendor specific. So it is it, fantastic from that aspect of it. And I think that's absolutely critical for us moving forward. Whether we're moving forward as individuals, as organizations, as industries, as society, blah, blah, blah. And so I think that that's great to have opportunities like this to serve on the community or the committees or, or the like to get involved. And so you're sharing, you're sharing your ideas with others in the industry. Um, there's a lot of vendors here, but it's not a salesy salesy. It's predominantly the MSP community. Um, are you able to provide feedback to the vendors to help out the MSP community? Are you finding that as much um, or in, in, in any aspect, or is it just more an MSP to MSP conversation? Well, the answer is yes, because at any point in time, this is such an integrated microcosm in terms of service providers, service consumers, service resellers, service whatever. So any two people in that have a relationship, whether it's impl implied or implicit or explicit. So there's always a conversation that you can have that basically says, hey, MSP over here versus MSP over here. What are you doing that's working, that's not working, so on and so forth. The same thing can be true vendor to vendor or MSP to vendor or vice versa. So the bottom line is, is a lot of us are facing the exact same opportunities, challenges, and the like, and can offer different perspectives. So you think that the connective tissue in between the vendors and the, and the MSP community is tight enough to where the what you do with the MSP community as a whole will also have an impact on the vendors and how the vendors interact with the MSPs? Or, or are you saying this is strictly an MSP conversation and this is strictly a vendor conversation? Yes. <laughs> but, but, the, but that's the thing, is that it's malleable enough, so it's, it's based on the situation of the people having the conversations. So I can sit down with other MSPs, we can have an MSP to MSP conversation, that's great. I can sit down with vendors and we can have an MSP to vendor conversation or vice versa from that aspect. Or vendors can sit down. So there's enough non-selling that's going on, or enough relationship selling, perhaps that's a better way like to that. approach it. Uh, that we can actually talk about, well, here's the WIFM for me, the what's in it for me, here's the NIMBY not in my backyard for me, and what's it for you, and then how do we, how do we come up with a relationship that's going to shore up so that both parties can say, yeah, I got something out of that. I like that. All right, and it doesn't, it doesn't involve money necessarily changing hands. It usually doesn't, actually. So you're suggesting that people are doing business with other people I think people are advancing the relationship with other people and not it doesn't always manifest itself as business. So in other words, if I basically have a conversation with somebody and I say, hey, I need more help from the vendor world uh, to help me communicate to my end clients, well, the vendor may sit back and go, oh, okay, I'm reselling services to people like you. That helps me come up with a better communication process. Absolutely. No money changed hands. Wow. See. This is, this is exactly what CCF is about, is we're talking communication, we're talking relationships, we're talking shared knowledge, we're talking uh, a little bit of sarcasm, potential humor, um, a lot of 
Sarcasm, uh, a lot of sarcasm. And and, yeah, and cool. ripping on Tony. I mean, let's let's be honest. It's it's kind of it's good to be the lightning rod. Tony. Uh, oh, that's right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is my <laughs> face red? No. On that note, Cindy, Bob, absolute pleasure seeing you, brother. <laughs> you are amazing. Thank you so much for the interview. CCF CompTIA. If you're not here already, come next year. You have to do it. Yeah, you really have to. It's it, it's in the fine print. <laughs> Take care, everyone. In my first notable mention, GitHub 2FA begins on March 13th, which was yesterday. Written by Laura Payne and Hirsch Single for GitHub. GitHub has announced its commitment to require all developers who contribute code on github.com to enable two-factor authentication by the end of this calendar year, so the end of 2023. Now, the initiative is part of a platform-wide effort to secure software development by improving account security and preventing engineering and account takeover attacks, which is something that we all have to be wary of. GitHub has started rolling out the 2FA requirement as of yesterday, March 13th, starting with smaller groups and individuals. I was one of those individuals and went ahead and set 2FA up for myself today, and it took less than two minutes, so I do suggest everyone go ahead and take care of it as soon as they get the ability to do so. Users will be notified and receive banners on GitHub about their 2FA enrollment status and deadline, and once you start seeing that, you'll have 45 days to configure 2FA for yourself. Once 2FA settings are in place, GitHub will ask you to review them 28 days later, which is a fantastic move because we need to make sure these things work. We need to make sure that we're securing the software supply chain. It's a team effort. Everyone needs to do their part. And this is one thing that you can do. And in my next note, I'll mention General Motors explores using chat GPT in vehicles, written by Nathan Gomez and Joseph Reut for Reuters. General Motors is exploring the use of chat GPT as a broader collaboration with Microsoft. Now, of course, Microsoft and GM partnered in 2021 to accelerate driverless vehicle commercialization. So this makes good sense. Now, chat GPT could be used to access information on things such as vehicle features, uh, to program functions, or even integrate schedules from a calendar, which could be handy. Now, GM is saying that this shift means customers can expect vehicles coming out in the future to be much more capable and fresh when it comes to emerging technologies, which is fantastic. And at the same time, Microsoft is ramping up its efforts to embed more technology in vehicles from infotainment systems to automated driving operating systems. So we'll have to see where uh, this goes. And then my first notable mention, Microsoft OneNote to get enhanced security after recent malware abuse, written by Sergio Gotlan for Bleeping Computer. Microsoft will improve protection against phishing attacks using malicious OneNote files. OneNote users will receive a notification when they open or download an embedded file in OneNote that is deemed dangerous. Phishing attacks use OneNote documents with .1 extensions and embedded files hidden behind overlays. Double-clicking launches the embedded file, which can infect users with malware or ransomware. To prevent such attacks, users can block OneNote documents with .1 extensions or use Microsoft Office group policies to disable embedded files. Phishing attackers have been using OneNote documents since December 2022 to deliver malware payloads like info stealers. And for my second notable, Microsoft finally fixes Windows 11 slow file copy issue over SMB, also written by Sergio Galan for Bleeping Computer. Microsoft fixed the slow file copy issue over SMB in Windows 11 after the 2022 update. The fix was included in the KB5022913 February 2023 non-security preview update released in February 2022. The issue affected copying large files from a network to a local drive and could more than double the time needed for file operations. The fix is optional and can be installed through Windows Update or downloaded manually from the Microsoft Update Catalog. Users can also use file copy utilities that don't employ Catch Manager like Robocopy or XCopy as a temporary workaround. And in our resource of the week, eight things that you can do with an extra hour of daylight that will help you be a better entrepreneur. Written by John Boyknot for Entrepreneur, the article lists many different things that you could do with your extra hour, including exercise, uh, networking, reading, pausing for self-reflection, and I won't spoil them all for you. If you're looking for a way to use your extra hour, just look for the link in the show notes. Unlike me, I'll be getting an extra hour of sleep because I have two kids and a dog that do not understand daylight savings time.
There are plenty of amazing upcoming events taking place across the community, so let's see what's happening this week. March 13th through the 15th, an in-person event, CompTIA Communities and Councils Forum in Chicago, Illinois. Also on March 15th at 12 p.m. Eastern, Build a Better MSP Discussion Group presented by Everything MSP. And on March 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Practice Makes Perfect, How to Run a Tabletop Exercise presented by Huntress. And coming from the MSP Media Network this week, we have, in case you missed it, Technical Deficit Episode 7, Solving the Top 5 Cyber Drain Sysadmin CTF Challenges with Kevin Teglar. On March 16th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, the Tech Bar Podcast Episode 54 with Emilio Garcia of Tier 2 Technologies. And of course, on Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, MSP Dispatch presented by the MSP Media Network. Hey, I'm Powerhouse Ray. And I'm Super Cousin Danny. And we're the hosts of The The Tech Tech Bar. Bar. Pull up a stool with us every other Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern for drinks, jokes, and games with your friends in the MSP channel. So that's it for this March 14th episode of MSP Dispatch live from the CompTIA Community Council's Forum here in Chicago at the Renaissance Hotel. Tony, uh... We've learned a lot of stuff. We've seen some amazing announcements. We have more interviews that are go- that are going to be just on this episode. And they're going to be all week long because so many amazing people, like you said, so many amazing people under one roof. It's great. Uh, what were you most excited about for CCF? Honestly, it's, 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 this is weird. <laughs> this is so weird. And right? like, where are my waterfalls? Like, kind of waterfallish. It's a cool uh, background. We I, built it just for this episode. Just for this, yeah. Um, no, it's seeing you in person, seeing all the people that we work with, we talk to all the time, uh, getting uh, to share some oxygen with the same people, um, sharing ideas. I think I think that's great. And, and the one-on-one time is amazing. Absolutely. I, I love that we live like four and a half hours away from each other, but never, we fly yeah. several hours. Yeah, never see each other. Let's let's make sure we <laughs> let's make sure we go out of state to There uh, you camp. go. There you go. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tell us what you think of this. Hit us up on Discord, hit us up in the comments, hit us up on Reddit and all the other amazing places. Uh, I should do the thing where email us news at mspmedia.tv, send us voicemail 833 MSP Network. But let's be honest, I'm not as good without a teleprompter. So I'll just say take care of yourselves and each other. Be safe, everyone. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network. Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Matt Fox, and I'm with Phil Buck today, filling in for the great Ray Orsini and Tony Orlando, who are at CompTIA. Yeah, it's so good. And I wasn't uh, even trying to make it Mindy work. for jumping right in. That was great. GitHub announced its commitment to require all developers to contribute. Ah. Okay, here we go. I did that for you, Simon, so you could see what it looks like to completely mess up and bite it. Users are also going to be asked to perform different types of tasks. And hold on a second, because someone's entering my front door as I'm speaking. Let's just give this a second. So it's okay, Simon. You can you can laugh on camera too. It's all right. We gotta get some outtakes in there for Ray and Tony. They they they're gonna appreciate it. <laughs> Yo, oh wait, hold on. Hey, Ma, did you get Cheez Its? Mom got Cheez Its. All right, <laughs> it's a wrap. Oh, it's the puffy kind. All right. Well, this episode of MSP Dispatch is brought to you by Cheez Its. Mm-mm-mm. Delicious. To prevent such attacks, users. To prevent such attacks, users can. To prevent such attacks, users can block OneNote documents with what? Oh my God! Hold on. This is harder than it looks. <laughs> uh, okay. Does that work? Yeah. It was a little spotty, but you're, you're muted. muted. You're on you're mute. On you're, you're on mute. mute. You're yeah. On mute. yeah. <laughs>
All right, so that wraps an amazing episode of MSP Dispatch here live at CompTIA Councils. I screwed that up. How, how do we have freaking bloopers? I don't even... All right. One more She's time. Laughing. She's dying. She knows, she knows we're idiots. Uh, all right. So that takes us out. This is... Uh, Bob's like, this is why you suck and this is why I do this professionally. All right. so, am I making... The, am, I imp- am I improving your opinion of me or making it worse? I'm just curious. Oh, which flatline? Which flatline? Okay, okay. As long as it can't go lower, we're good. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Damn it. All right, all right.